So let's first start by proving 1 implies 2. So how do we do that? Well, the idea here is going to be I have my machine M. Okay. So I have Q0, then I have maybe state 1, I have state 2, maybe I have some other final states. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the machine M, right, to create an equivalence class R, right? Because that's what I need to do. 2 says that I have some equivalence class R that satisfies some properties. Because the only thing I'm given is 1, I need to surely use um, the machine M to create this equivalence relation. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the equivalence relation RM, right? And so what does RM do? It says, suppose I have a string X that goes to state 1. Well, this string X is going to go in one of the equivalence classes of RM, right? So let's say X is here. Then any other string that goes to state one, right? So these are um, the strings that go to state one of M. And I'm going to call this actually S1, right? So all of these strings are going to be inside uh, this set or this equivalence class S1, okay? Then let's say I have strings that go uh, to two, suppose they're they look like Z, uh, U, and so on, right? So these strings uh, are going to go in a different equivalence class, right? So let's say Z. And so Z and all of its other uh, strings, uh, which are all related to each other, are going to be in this equivalence relation, which I'm going to call S2, right? And so on, right? So I'm going to create, um, I'm going to create these equivalence classes based on the states in my machine M, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create these. And, and so you can see that what we're doing is we're slowly but surely creating uh, this bigger and bigger set. And what it's going to do in the end is we're just going to have uh, sigma star, right? So all of these equivalence classes together are going to make up sigma star, right? Oops, so this is, uh, this is, going to make up sigma star. And then um, I know that what RM needs to do, right? So the, the relation R that I'm building, which is going to be RM, has to satisfy all the conditions of two, right? And so one of these conditions is going to be that the union of some of its classes makes up L. But then actually, what are going to be these classes that make up L? They're going to be the ones that are related to the final states, okay? Because a string is an L if and only if it goes to a final state in the machine, right? And so that's going to be the idea of the proof, okay? So let's just do that. Um, so let's um, assume one, right? So we assume the statement one, okay? Meaning that we have a machine M that has states, an alphabet, a transition function, an initial state, and a final state, a set of final states, sorry, right, such that language recognized by M is L, okay? And so we need to find an equivalence relation R satisfying the conditions in two, right? And so what I said is, okay, well, let's pick actually a specific equivalence relation. Let's pick R as Rm, right? So, well, first of all, we know that it's an equivalence relation. And we also know that it's right invariant, right? So it satisfies those two properties immediately, right? Because we um, kind of proved this, but we surely showed this, right? I just said, I just told you for the equivalence relation to sort of prove it um, on your own, okay? So we know these two conditions, right? Now, what are the equivalence classes um, of this relation RM, right? So what are the equivalence classes 
of Rm. Well, we're going to denote them with um, S sub Q, right? So this is the same notation as in the handout. And this, just, this is just saying that um, all of the strings that go to Q are going to be lumped together in some equivalence class, right? And so this is going to be the set of all strings for which when you start at Q0 and you read X, you go to Q. Okay, and so how many equivalence classes are, am I going to have? I'm going to have a finite number of these, right? So I have a finite number of equivalence classes. Why? Because I have a finite number of states, right? Because I have, I'm assuming that M is a DFA, right? So it's a deterministic finite automata, meaning that uh, the cardinality of Q is finite, okay? And because the, the index of my equivalence relation Rm is going to be the same as the cardinality of Q, and Q, the cardinality of Q is finite, then of course uh, the index um, of Rm is going to be finite, okay? So that means that Rm has finite index, excellent, so that satisfies um, the third condition that I needed. The last condition is that um, L is the union of some of the equivalence classes of Rm. Well, like I said before, if I just take, right, if we take uh, the equivalence classes, corresponding to the accept states, right? So in other words, if I take, um, if I take the union over the final states, right, of SQ, right? So what, is, what this is saying, right? This is saying, take all of the equivalence classes um, that contain strings, that when you give them to machine, they're in any accept state, right? Well, because by the definition of a DFA, a string is in an accept state if and only if it's in the language L, then the union of these equivalence classes will necessarily make up L, okay? And so that proves the final condition that L is the union of some of the, of the equivalence classes of R.